excited about, again, my book, Leaving Your Life Imprint. I'm, I'm in, it, we're going to be out on Amazon, and we'll be letting you know that on our, our email and uh, our website. And so, anyways, I, before we kind of get going, I, I just want to remind you again, our speaker today and, and interviewee is uh, Mr. Dan Miller. Dan is uh, just, he, he's phenomenal. He's, he's a speaker. He, he's a writer. He's an encourager and inspirer in so many people on so many different levels. And we're just honored to have you again, Dan, here in this second segment. So let's, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about this wonderful book that you wrote. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it's been, but uh, 48 Days. Uh, tell, us, tell us about the 48 Days to the Work You Love and, and what, what, what kind of, um, you know, what, it's, it, it's been an amazing book and it's been an amazing ride. I, I'd love to hear, you know, what's, what's going on with you now, but maybe you can just, you know, take some minutes here and share the significance of 48 Days. And uh, I, I noticed on there that uh, when, you, when I called you today, you, you, uh, you left a message and you said, I'll get right back with you in 48 days. And then you laughed and you said, I'm just kidding, which I was really glad you said that. Uh, but anyways, tell us about 48 Days and, um, you know, its significance to your life and so many. Sure. 48 Days, the message started in a Sunday school class where I was simply teaching on career life transition. But I became somewhat frustrated working with people who clearly described that their life was a mess their work was unfulfilling, they needed to change. And so we'd map out a clear plan of transition. And I'd run into them two years later and they hadn't done anything. I thought, you gotta be kidding me. And so I realized people were waiting until all the lights were green to leave the house, so to speak. Or the excuses, gee, I'm gonna wait until the kids graduate from school, wait till I get a college degree, wait until I pay off my student loan debt. And there were all these things that kept people from making significant change. Uh, there's got to be a timeline that would be reasonable for people to go through a process and make change. Now, this was back, well, I did this really as kind of a marketing lark. I never expected it to, to have such traction, but it was back when 48 Hours was becoming popular as a TV show. And I thought, I'll bet I could get some brand recognition from 48. It's not a, a normal kind of number like seven days in a week, 30 days in a month, even 60, 90, or 120, 48. Mm -hmm. And so I did that, 48 days to the working love, meaning that's enough time to assess where you are, to get the advice and input of other people, to do a little bit more research, choose the best solution, and act. Mm -hmm. Whether that is deciding where to go to church, where to send your child to college, what kind of car you're gonna buy, or house you're gonna live in, or what kind of business you're gonna start or to do a job search. 48 days really is enough time. And when I did that, it was like magic. People were immediately, you, are you telling me I really can change my life in 48 days? Uh, my response has always been then and now, yes, you can, if you create a plan and act on it. Yeah. So it was so powerful, it became kind of our identity that 48 days and ultimately I changed the business name just to wrap in around that. And I've really ridden that brand for quite some time. Now, you knew me back in the late 90s when I was teaching that Sunday school class. The book came out in hardback in 2005. I did an update in 2010 and then a major update in 2015. It's still in hardback after all these years and we're at about 1.6 million copies on that book now. So wow. it's a message that has really inspired and encouraged a lot of people to take charge, put themselves in the driver's seat, and to get new results by making specific steps of action to lead them into new results. Mm. That's huge. I, I remember um, you saying this to me, and, and then I, I remember you reading it from you, and it's, uh, oh, okay, let me, get, let me get back out of here. There, um, I remember you sharing this this really important phrase with me. You know the difference between a dream, a dreamer, and a dream coming true, is one of them has a time frame on it. You remember that? Absolutely. You know, in, other words, in other words, you know, I I was a big dreamer, but I, I got it. I, you know, I realized, you know, 
I can do this, you know, starting my own company. I, I can, I can do this, but I need to be strategic about my time if it's going to work. And, 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 and so I did, I set, set out and, you know, I ended up uh, now 23 year, years later as a founder and I've just now resigned from one of my companies, but you know, I looked over over the last 20 years, ha had I not done your principle, I wouldn't have ran a, you know, a company that over, you know, uh, these, this many years, uh, probably $80 million worth of services to kids and families across the state of Tennessee. Um, so it had to be strategic. And, and so I'm, I'm here to, to say thank you, number one, uh, looking back at all that time, realizing that how powerful it is to be intentional about our days and intentional about our years and to, pro and to set goals that are attainable. Uh, and that, that's really helped me in my own personal walk. And, 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 and you know, hundreds of thousands of kids and families have benefited because I didn't just say, well, I'll, I'll dream about that, but never, like you said, uh, followed up on it. Yeah, well, good point. Yeah, dream, dreaming is a good starting point. Everybody has dreams, but until you create a clear timeline and plan of action, nothing changes. Yeah. People go to their graves with their dreams still in them, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But if you create a plan, you can see the dream come true no matter what your starting point. Yeah. I had a, a question come in this week from a, a young lady and she says, you know what, if she left, I actually left an audio message and she said, I have no chance in life. She says, I think it must be the way that you were born. Now she was clearly of a, another mm -hmm. country, not English, not being her first language, but it was really sad mm -hmm. to think that that was her perspective. It must be the way that you were born. Well, we all were born in a particular way. Some of us were, had more advantages than others. There's no question about that. But I still believe that we can not just to supersede God in any way, but we can still determine what do we want our future to be. And by taking specific actions, move in that direction very quickly. Mm -hmm. Dan, it was really interesting. I remember me starting our company. We took out $650 our last $650 out of our savings account to start life care. <laughs> and, and I remember Rand going, you know, that's our last penny of savings. I said, yeah, but I, but there was a, there was a spur that came up my back of inspiration to say, yeah, but this is a God thing. It's not, this is not a Kenny Monk thing. This is something that, yeah, God's called me to, but, and I have to, but I have to either put up or shut up. And mm. the, I, I have the things called mockisms now. One of them is, you know, the greatest tragedy in life is to live your whole life, but to never have risk living. And mm -hmm. and I, I feel like that's that's kind of where it is. You know, we at some point we have to risk uh, if we want to get get on with life. And 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 what is, whether whether that's risking being a great mom or dad or risking being a great coach, whatever it is, when you're called uh, to not hold back. Not, and not, and not realize that you 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 God's called uh, each one of us something really special and specific in our life. If we'll we'll uh, follow up. Go ahead. What do you well, think? Well, well, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and and risk um, is maybe not even the best word to use because when we have a dream, then create a plan of action. It's a very healthy move. It's not risk in the way that. You know, going to Las Vegas and putting the keys to your car down on a roll of the dice. That's, that just depends on luck. Yep. But when we really have a vision and uh, confirm that through prayer, prayer and the affirmation of other people, then we can move forward uh, knowing that it's, the, the risk has been reduced dramatically. We're just getting to anticipate the excitement of moving into a new season of life. Well, I, I mentioned 48 days because it, it didn't happen overnight, did it? I mean, it didn't just happen. You, oh no! There was a no. lot of a lot of work behind that. That recovery from that crash, where there were some perhaps easier outs to reduce the time, and being an optimist, I thought I could knock things out in a couple of years. It actually took twelve years, twelve years to get back to zero. So it wasn't twelve years to prosperity; it was twelve years back 
to zero. And then I started moving forward. But by then, the pendulum was swinging. And yeah. so uh, things came together, you know, pretty nicely. <laughs> it took a long time. <laughs> um, so I, I'm thinking about your life and, you know, how... I don't know when I when I wrote this book and I know you're a big a big fan of family. You're you're in a really interesting uh, season of life. Where, where are you at right now in terms of, you know, you've accomplished so much and yet, you know, what are the you know the Dan Miller I know? There's always another horizon. You know, you get up, it's like, hey, I'm not gonna stay still. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna find out what's on the other side of that hill. I love that about you. What what is it that's that's cooking up there inside that? That uh, Dan Miller had years. Well, I'm 71 years old. I have three children, 17 grandchildren, so I've got a lot of activity and a lot of uh, a lot of members in my downline, so to speak. <laughs> I have a lot of fun, and there's nothing more exciting than working with kids and grandkids and helping them identify you know, their unique gifts and mm -hmm. what those can look like in terms of them being productive and having a lot of joy in their life. But also, one of the things I do personally in setting goals each year is look at what is the 15% of what I've been doing that I'm going to no longer continue. So I open up a new area in my life where I can add things in that I've never done before. So it's not risking everything. And there are things like coaching and writing that I continue, but there are new areas I'm always looking to develop. And frankly, the things that I have in place right now, the most profitable, fulfilling parts of my business and life are things that started in that 15% where they were small risk, small ventures, but I, I gave myself space to experiment and those things have turned into some very fulfilling things. I mean, taking advantage of new technology that we would not have been able to even know about 10 years ago is pretty exciting. So those open up new doors of opportunity. And yeah, I've got more anticipated. I mean, I'm making a 25 year plan for the things that I want to do in the next 25 years. Um, Joanne and I are, are getting ready to move. We're making some big changes just geographically, but in terms of overall business and the things that I put my hand to my time to, uh, those are going to continue, but there's some fun things on the horizon that I'm very, very excited about. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I think about my own family and I, I, I read a New York Times bestselling author, you probably are very familiar, you're very well read, um, but it was called Entitled The Last Lecture by Randy Posh. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, it, it was a wake up call, Dan, to me to realize mm -hmm. um, I talked about mortality. I remember, I remember after reading that book, um, you know, in the middle of the night, just jumping up and sitting up in bed and then putting my feet down to make sure that I was still living because, you know, that whole book was so amazingly awakening me to uh, my own numbering of my days. And through that, uh, you know, through, through the series of, of, of other things, I finally said, I need to write and leave a legacy for my own kids. You know, it's, it's not enough that, that they, um, you know, I give them all these possessions and don't really share them what's the principles be, be beyond living, you know, beyond my own lifetime. And so that's what is the premise of, of my book is, is that legacy. You're talking about legacy. You just got through sharing some things about legacy. And that's where I'm at in my life. I'm, I'm in that, that season, uh, maybe a little, maybe a little earlier in the season, but I'm, I'm in that fall season too, uh, realizing that I want to give something that will live beyond my lifetime for my kids. And it's not possessions, it's story. It's, it's, it's about heritage. It's about what makes a person uh, successful and, and learning from people like you and, and others that have imprinted my life and sharing those stories because I think we're missing, I think we're missing out in, uh, in this world in which we live, if we don't share the importance of story and the importance of, of heritage. And uh, I, I remember sharing with my, uh, my grandkids 
the importance of my, my six time great grandfather realizing he came from Germany and I shared his story and to see them uh, move from the couch up to so, so close to me that, that they could touch, you know, wanted to touch me to go because they were so enmeshed in that story to go, wow, I had no idea that, that Pop, your, your six time great grandfather was 25 years old, came over on a ship and, and he landed and that was our, and, and it was one of the worst storms of that ship. Mm. And people died, and people, and babies were born over that three or four month period of coming. Up. So, I guess what I'm saying is, I, I think the, this 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 podcast is extremely important to me because I know you're there with me, and you understand the importance of heritage and to number our days. Go ahead. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And, uh, and that's an exciting thing. You know, when I think about legacy, I have uh, no concerns about being remembered, not that people need to remember Dan Miller's name. As you know, any one of our sons changed his last name. His last name is no longer Miller. That could be intimidating to a dad to not have the family surname continued. But he remembers better than I our conversation when he approached us about that. And I said, Jared, I hope that uh, what people remember about us goes much deeper than just what our name was. When I think about the opportunities I've had to speak, to coach, to work with people in critical transition points in their lives, and then to write, and now having children and grandchildren, wow. I mean, the ripple effect of that um, w- could not be stopped. If I disappeared today, the ripple effect would continue forever and ever. That's pretty fun to think about that. It is. It is. I, um, yeah, I, I, I think the importance is not to leave our kids empty handed emotionally and spiritually and physically. Um, I think it's important that we live out those principles every day. And, uh, like you said, I'm not, I'm not into, uh, putting my name in life, but I am, I am in, I am definitely committed to telling people that your story, regardless of what it is, is important to God. It's important to those people around you. And um, I, I, I was really, you know, these podcasts have really op- opened up my eyes. You know, I've, I've looked at, um, you know, working with Alberto Gonzalez, him t- sharing some things. I've got some amazing guests like you that are coming up that I, I realize they're speaking every one of these podcasts. They're 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 adding those more imprints to my life, and and it and it's and I don't want it to just be my life now. I want it to be shared to to a world out there, to 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 a, whoever will, 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 will are are interested in learning about more about their story, and wanting to wonder the value of their story. So today's been a very special time that you've been uh, able to come, and I, I I appreciate so much you taking your time. Um, any any parting thoughts that you want to share with the audience before uh, we close up? Well, one of the things that I'm asked that often, but one of the things that relates to certainly your work as well as mine is I tell people it's never too late to have a new beginning. You know, I sometimes talk to people who are 63 and they think they've lost their opportunity, but I also talk to those who are 27 who say, wow, I majored in the wrong thing in college, you know, and they give the impression that now they just have to kind of coast into the grave. Well, neither of those is a healthy approach, but no matter where you are, if you're not content with the life, the results, the legacy that you're leaving now, it's never too late to have a new beginning. Oh. But yeah, I'm, hey, I'm delighted to be your guest. Hope that you um, enjoy the process of launching your work out there. I certainly have enjoyed the opportunities I've had in that space, and I'm sure you'll do the same. A redemptive story is uh, I think guess we could actually uh, classify this this um, part because we all have a God who loves us and forgives us and gives us purpose and uh, meaning in our life. A life well lived is really what what we're talking about today. So Dan, thank you again. Uh, uh, you you are a wonderful uh, dear friend of mine, and I, I really appreciate your time this afternoon. God Thanks bless. Thanks so much.